I'll, 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 I'll pitch in my, my line of thoughts. Well, thank you very much. Uh, today is a little bit to, today. I'm, my mind is a little bit, uh, well, let's just say that a little bit, uh, exhausted. <laughs> well, you know, it's difficult to cut through the, uh, fog, the fog of right. fog of war, as they call it. And, right. uh, right now we are, we're getting snowed under, um, it's even worse than fog. And uh, uh -huh. you mentioned Davos, and yes. uh, people have to, uh, again, understand history in order to know what's going on. For example, we were all told that the Nazis won World War II. I mean, excuse me, they lost World War II. Right. Well, if they lost World War II, how come we have the uh, World Economic Forum uh, controlling um, essential politicians and civil servants in most, if not all, of our Western democracies. The WEF being controlled by a Mr. Klaus Schwab, whose right. father owned a, um, a company that specialized in um, turbines and electric motors and made flamethrowers on the side for Nazi Germany during World War II and it's actually a Swiss German company. And oh, pe yeah. people have to understand, of course, that there is no uh, differentiation between the Swiss and the Germans during that time. It was just a, a national division of convenience in order to allow uh, Germany to maintain uh, industries and financial connections outside of their war zone. Uh, kind of like having a, uh, a home base that's protected, that couldn't be bombed and uh and that they allowed them to do international exchange hide their gold things like that the and a classic example of is klaus schwab's uh family business which was um based in um in switzerland but had its main main factories in um in germany across the border and even had its own uh in 1944 45 even even had its own um labor camp right to provide laborers now why is this person uh, with a Nazi background um, uh, have all of our politicians on his website as as his accolades? And I'm not going to name names well, because you can see the list and I, I, I sent you the list. It's publicly available mm -hmm. and it includes shockingly familiar ones like our own premier, Mr. Horgan. Right. So what the, what in the hell was he doing in Davos? <laughs> well, and why is he, he why is he working for them? Well, in fact, the way I see it, sir, is, fact of the matter is, um, even though history books told us mm -hmm. that the Allies won the the Second World War mm -hmm. and defeated Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. In reality, my understanding is that uh, Nazi didn't defeat. Well, it wasn't su didn't suffer from full defeat. In fact, they may not have surrendered after all. They may not have. Uh, yes, citing that, um, citing several things, uh, but more more importantly, um, it was the Allied during the late stages of Second World War, teaming up with the Soviets, Stalin's Red Army, yeah. that uh, attacked and captured uh, the bulk of uh, Berlin. Of course. And of course, and then there the, his, the history books told us that uh, supposedly Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun uh, you know, uh, committed suicide and uh, somebody burned their bodies just to make sure they don't get uh, identified. And then because it was the Soviet side of the Red Army who liberated that part of the bunker yeah. and discovered the body and so on and so forth, they declared that uh, Adolf Hitler is already dead. Yes, and therefore uh, the war then, must be over. Uh, because of all these teaming up actions, 
to to go against Nazi Germany. Uh, obviously, both sides of the armies from uh, between allies like you, United States, Britain, and so on, and the other side, which is the Red Army. Uh, they captured the bulk of the city. Yes, and also uh, the bulk of the scientists, absolutely, and engineers, and they split between themselves and secretively uh, moved them back to their home country to aid with the technological and chemical uh, and weaponry development. Yes. For example, uh, the mentioning of von Braun, um, which has succeeded successfully moved to United States yes. and got his identity pretty much cleaned up and washed uh, and gave him a normal citizenry, mm -hmm. like citizen status, ended up, uh, he helped with his understanding of rockets and the, 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 the development of uh, the German B-1 and B-2 rockets. Yep. He aided the United States in further developing rockets that ended up uh, helping to shoot the Apollo up and up and up to the moon in the 1960s. Now, the, this... the rocket was called the Atlas IV, Atlas V Yes, rocket. that's right. Yes, so what, what I'm trying to say is that um, other than the fact that there were maybe several handfuls of the so-called uh, higher-ranking evil Nazi officials, including Helmut Goering, that were prosecuted in the Nuremberg trial, uh -huh. the fact of the matter is uh, the bulk of them, even some of the higher-ranking uh, Nazi officials, such as Albert Hess, yes. was uh, released. Yes. Or subsequently were, released and yes. were relocated elsewhere. So, yes. of course, to me, that's my understanding is that uh, the, the Nazi there didn't, didn't suffer from a full defeat after all. Well, they just got relocated. How can it be a victory if you've only uh, put in jail the leaders and the 10,000 technicians and enablers are now working for you? That's right. Uh, except are they working for you? or have they just uh, uh, come over to infiltrate you? Um, so uh, let's look again at what you've just mentioned, sure. that war is, is defined as uh, military victories on a battlefield, such as Berlin, and that uh, the figurehead political leaders, once they're dead, captured, or put on trial, that signals the end of their war ability. That's right. Well, that just goes against um, uh, the real uh, power in the in, uh, the real power base of nations, the real power base of nations is are there is their economy and their technology, and That's and right. and uh, it's very well known um, uh, the very well known saying that war is simply uh, economics by other means, yes, economic control and uh, and domination by other means. Uh, so a war is the overt extension of your nation's uh, economic and technological power. And yes. if, 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 if a country maintains those things, then it certainly hasn't lost any wars, has it? And, that is indeed the case. And Germany um, went to a great and very successful, uh, to a very successful extent, managed to maintain its economic power, its technology, its wealth, spread out all over the world. Uh, in order to be reassembled in the 1950s to become the economic superpower and the leader of Europe. And guess what? That was Hitler's plan. Hitler's yeah. plan from the very beginning was to build a Reich, build a unified economic entity in Europe. Correct. And that's what we have today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a unified economic entity called the EU, Right. And they demand obeyance. Mm -hmm. You have to follow their rules. And NATO is simply the military extension, and you, the UN is simply the, the political extension, and the EU is simply the economic extension of Hitler's Third Reich. Wake up. Correct. So, so all in all, me thinks that uh, Nazi did lose the war during Second World War after all. 
in, as a matter of fact, on the contrary, they uh, they won the war somehow. <laughs> well, it might have been a negotiated, a secretly negotiated armistice, similar to World War One. Yep. And just yep. not publicly uh, uh, acknowledged because that's for political, that's for propaganda purposes. Now, mm -hmm. since when does propaganda tell the truth? Since never. That's when. And the propaganda that um, suddenly finding Hitler and Eva Braun's dead bodies means the war is over is childish. But unfortunately, uh, childish fairy tales is what um, um, society tends to believe. Correct. Uh, right now, I believe that there were absolutely zero press coverage of the um, Sussman trial uh, right. by by John Durham, which proves conclusively that uh, Trump had a an illegal, seditious, and treasonous conspiracy against him at the highest levels of both the CIA and the FBI, orchestrated by his political opponent Hillary Clinton, uh, to to destroy his presidency. Yes. Not not only to stop his election, but then to undermine it afterwards, which is clearly unconstitutional, and illegal, and they should all be put in jail if not shot. But there was no coverage of that in the media. Instead, everybody was watching uh, um, uh, to find out why Johnny's deaf and what Amber heard. Uh, well, um, I'm sorry, but if that is a uh, you know in, an indication of the level of public attention, then uh, we don't have either democracy or intelligence in uh, in Western society, do we? So you no, can see no. how you can see how it easy it is to tell people fairy tales and, and because all you need is media coverage and the, and the proper psychological setting and they will believe anything. Now, back to Davos today. Why do people not know that the Davos crowd of indoctrinated acolytes, uh, who they have a whole system. You can be a young Davos follower or an older one. They've got a whole bunch of programs and by the way, where does their funding come from out there in Davos, in Switzerland, where the Nazi gold was hidden after the war? Oh, oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's obviously a multi uh, hundreds of millions of dollar operation in Davos there with all these training groups. And and by the way, when you go to Davos and you become a young Davosian, <laughs> and then you go back to your home country and become a Supreme Court clerk or a provincial yeah. premier, or a yeah. prime minister even, could yeah. it be possible that you opened a bank account in Zurich before you went home? Oh, as always. And is it possible that uh, you have a numbered bank account for the to support you in your political campaigns so that you can enter power in your home country and all the while uh, pledging allegiance to your uh, hidden masters? Now, there used to be laws and maybe there still are, <clears throat> against elected officials belonging to international or non-home non country organizations. Because it's a clear conflict of interest and possibly treasonous. <clears throat> so why are these people in operation and why are they embedded in our politics and our nations? And why are they now uh, threatening to give over our, our very sovereignty to a, the World Health Organization in the name to do with control, and that has to do with simply an extension of the Third Reich into yes. the one world government. You betcha. Are we going to sit back and watch this happen and spend our time uh, enjoying uh, uh, some soap opera in a courtroom or, or, or some TV show that keeps us uh, stupefied with, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, emotional nonsense or are we going to stand up for our rights before they're uh, before they're destroyed forever now that's the problem we face and and that's what's going on at Davos right now now I personally believe that they're not going to get away with it this time uh, e even though the media seems to be uh, following everything that uh, their masters tell them to a, a microcosmic example of that is just the other day, uh, our brave um, leader, uh, Justin Trudeau, attempted to give a speech here in uh, Vancouver, in Surrey, yep. and had to cancel 
because uh, the uh, venue where he was going to arrive at was surrounded by protesters calling for his uh, his head. And I believe that I believe the chant chant was just say no to Trudeau or something like that. Can't remember exactly. But the funny thing was that I noticed was the newspaper coverage. It didn't say like that. It no. said that people were hurling racist slurs. And that that's why he had to cancel his uh, appearance. Now, there was recordings all over the internet of people saying, no, Trudeau, no, Trudeau, and things like that. But I didn't hear a single recording of a racial, racial slur. That's right. So why would the newspaper put that in the headline if it's not true? In fact, uh, their, their actual story was ridiculous. It said, uh, some members of the... Uh, meeting mentioned that they heard racial slurs in other words it's uh it's secondhand um uh, you know gossip now That's newspapers right. are supposed to report first-hand facts not propaganda from somebody who's obviously wants to uh spin the story so no. here we have in microcosm the media is actually a, not just another extension of the liberal party right and this has got to stop this, this is, yes. this is, you know, there's such a thing as a class action lawsuit and, and uh, uh, somebody with the necessary funds and the necessary level of organization should go and write down the uh, names of everybody that attended that protest and organize them into a class action lawsuit against CTV and the CBC for slander. Yes. Because that's hate speech, which is against the law. To c accuse somebody of racism mm -hmm. in print yep. is official slander. And, it, and that's, a, that's a hateful uh, level of speech, which is actually illegal and has recently been legislated against by the liberal government. Yes. And yet here's the media doing it to, its own, to our own citizens. They should be sued for damages. Agree. Will it happen? Well, unfortunately, our legal system has already taken two years just to hear the first COVID anti-lockdown unconstitutional uh, overreach case. So if it does happen, it won't be in time to uh, protect us from the emergency we live in now. And that emergency is not only economic, it's fundamental to our liberties, those that our ancestors fought for in right. World War II and thought yes. that they had achieved success at, thought that they had been able to protect us from, protect us from fascism, protect us from uh, this kind of uh, insidious lies and propaganda, uh, which, which, is, which is fitting of a police state, not a free democracy with a free press. The, the, where, where you lose your voice and you lose your, your human rights, that's the first step towards tyranny, slavery, and fascism that our ancestors fought against in, uh, in, in two world wars. Yes. That's what Davos now, means. the whole Western civilizations and beyond have fallen for it once again because uh -huh. we are deeply controlled by the media. We're deeply controlled by the bad guys. Everything is still well under their, well under their spell. I so, think that that might have been true at one time, perhaps two and a half years ago, but it's no longer true today because living through the COVID lies and realizing that the overall mortality rate is still exactly the same as it was in 2019 is waking people up to the extent where this time it's not going to work. And, uh, right. and I think that it's obvious that the media are corrupt. They've been paid off. They're not going to report the truth any more than they report a, a proper democratic protest of concerned citizens and instead slanders them and calls them racists. When we live in a country like that, that's like Weimar Republic, Nazi Germany, 1930, where the people are really thinking what the newspapers tell us we're thinking, and that's their mistake. No, Correct. the the actual silent majority who don't have a voice are expressing themselves on social media. And it's a lot different from what you see on the mainstream media. And the mainstream media has been captured. It's a fifth column uh, digging away in a counter in a counterproductive manner 
at our rights, at our freedoms, at our democracy itself, and they're complicit. Mm -hmm. They're complicit and people are waking up to that fact. And I think that what we're seeing in Davos is a arrogant display of hubris. If they yes. actually think they can get away with any of these plans to take away our liberties and freedoms, that they actually think that we're gonna believe their organs of propaganda anymore, they're they they're sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop.